It's collecting intel week here on the Ramon <laughs> Foster show, as we were just discussing. He's Ramon, 11 years starting guard for the Pittsburgh Steelers. I'm Dan Kovacevic of DK Pittsburgh Sports here in downtown Pittsburgh. He's in Indianapolis. He is embarking on a, a scouting mission, right? I am, DK, man. Got my credentials and everything out here, man. Who would ever thought I'd be walking around with a layered and everything with credentials and post-playing career, DK? What do you think about that? What I think is you shouldn't have to show anybody who you are. You should just be able to walk in and go, hey, it's me. Remember me? I was here once, and I still didn't get drafted. I still – and look, look how wrong everybody here was. You're useless. Yeah. <laughs> That's about as real as it get right there, DK. Hey, it's man. A completely pointless event. Let us ring the mythical bell here. I got my headphone case. Okay, so I'll just clap it. <laughs> <laughs> I guess that'll have to do. That'll work. We are tight on time today. We are tight on time mm -hmm. all week. I'm leaving here. We have to cut this show short at 4.30 because I'm flying down to Bradenton, Florida to cover the Pirates spring training. Uh, I'll be back Friday. Moan will be back where he's going to be on Friday, and mm -hmm. we're going to be able to do a real show for you again on Friday. So to kind of make up for that, we're going to go with just a nonstop hey, Moan. Yeah, let's do that. Uh, or does that work? Yeah, I'm right, that so, too. I see a few coming in right now, man. Um, there's well, here, one that here, can start us off. You got it? I like I like this one right here from Brian Jonker, since you do both of these events. He says, hey, Moan, which do you place more importance on, the Combine or the Senior Bowl? It's two separate, I think, avenues with that. The Senior Bowl is an actual football game where you see guys from different teams, different divisions, different levels, meaning Matt playing against somebody from the SEC. Uh, and that's what you kind of run yourself into seeing how they they size up against guys. I think it's super important if you're a friends type of person to be able to have a situation where you can go play yourself up into some rounds. Uh, also, for the combine, to me, I think we're starting to see this. If y'all been following the news, you've seen a bunch of these high caliber guys who are opting out of running, doing activities, but simply just meeting. Marvin Harrison Jr. is one of those guys. Jaden Daniels one of those guys. I'm not sure if Caleb Williams said he's going to throw a knot this week, but the combine is just for measurables. Checking out what you're, where you stand as far as teams having these templates. You fit this mode, that mode, this mode, and that mode. And that's what this time of the year is for sure, guys, like a Jaden Daniels and a Caleb Williams and a Marvin Harrison Jr. This event, DK, I'll be honest with you, is probably going to be a situation where it starts to decline as far as like the uh, the superstars that come to it. You know, you, we might not see them on TV anymore when it comes down to guys uh, showing up at, at the combine and running these 40s and justifying where you should uh, draft them at. I've seen that be a case where Marvin Harrison Jr. said, hey, go look at my tape. That's essentially yeah. what it's going to turn. Yeah. Go look that at was, my tape. That was my combine. Yeah, and then, of course, with all this GPS stuff, right, the guys having the back of their jerseys now that teams are tracking, he said, I ran 22 miles per hour. In a game. In a game. In a game. <laughs> In a game, yes. With someone trying to hurt me. Yeah. Exactly. It's a little different. Jacob mm -hmm. says, hey, Moan, at what point will the Steelers get back to drafting linebackers? And I'm pretty sure, without speaking for Jacob, that he's referring to inside linebackers. That is a funny one to me because when I was playing, um, we used to laugh and joke about that. Oh, who's going to be the first round draft pick this year? Probably a linebacker. Linebacker. <laughs> linebacker. You got to think about just where your team is. Like, there was an exodus of players. You lost Devin Bush. Say what you want to about him, but you lost him and had to go find other guys. Never found a replacement for Shazier. That could be something where, of course, where you're drafting at, is there a prospect there that handles that type of uh, draft pick for you? I told you, of course, the fact that Mason Cole is cut, the fact that you have a serious need at center also, uh, 20 is a prime spot for center. I don't know what a first round middle linebacker is going to look like as far as this draft goes. But the fact that you're asking that question, I'm sure in that big board inside of the Steelers facility, they're asking that question too. Who can we take as a uh, linebacker? Jeff Feaser says, Hey, Moan, do you think that the increased salary cap of 30 million, which still sounds nuts to say out loud, 
might low available free agents because teams will be keeping their own players now that who might have been cap casualties. Do I think the increased salary lower the quality of available? Free I agents? had to read no. it twice too, but it makes yeah. sense. Yeah, no, Jeff, for this reason. Again, DK, I've been trying to prep people for a very long time with this since we struck that CBA deal. The minimums before long is about to be a million dollars for every player. Rookies coming to the league is a million dollar minimum. That's going to be base salary. We have to readjust our thinking on what guys are about to get paid. That same $30 million that they added to the cap will be dispersed amongst the same amount of people anyway. But here's the thing, too. If there's a quarterback that realizes that money is there, they're going to ask for that money, too. This doesn't change the quality of player. This just, instead of a one-year $3 million deal for a player, they may now get one year five. That's that adjustment to the increase in salary cap. Don't let that number throw you off like, oh, we're paying you all this money. No. TV, gambling, streaming, big business, that's why that cap is up. Mm -hmm. Bigger stadiums with more luxury suites. It's a long list of ways that the NFL and then in turn the players get rich. Matt McGrath says, hey, Moan, are there concerns – in receiving prospects who are known for jump ball ability in college versus separation, which one's a bigger deal? A uh, bigger deal would be separation. I would NFL hope open so. means more. Yeah. 50 jump balls are 50 50 balls. You can't count on that, but somebody that can separate at the point is somebody that's super valuable for a guy. Again, think about all the dudes that have come across the league, like Juju had good separation. Juju wasn't a speed jump ball guy. You separate Antonio Brown. Whatever he'll say, I don't know if he ran that 4-4 or not. I think he did because he got faster as he got older. But A.B.'s ability was what? Route running and separation. That's the difference. Yeah, absolutely. And I think when I think of the Steelers and when I think of what they need coming into this season, forgive me for this. Uh, for ahead. those of you, I mean, I, I just I see another wide receiver. I'm sorry. I mean, I'd, I'd love <laughs> to see this right. team load up on offensive weapons, a new coordinator and everything. Uh, ben says, hey, Moan and DK, what do you think of maybe using our pick 197 on Joe Milton from your Vols? Does he have legit NFL talent given some developmental time? Who is projecting to pick 197? Here's the thing. I've seen this question Joe Milton come up a few times in uh, us doing this show, DK. Uh, Joe's a specialty. Joe, in six, seven years of college, has yet to fully dominate. I don't know if that translates over into the NFL, but he did dominate in Michigan. He came to Tennessee and got upseated by what Hendon Hooker. position? I don't know who this quarterback. is. Quarterback. He's a quarterback. Oh, He's a quarterback. okay. He's a quarterback. Yeah. He's a quarterback. Played for Tennessee with me. Think about Joe. Joe's got a cannon of an arm. Think about Wait, if Joe, he played with you at Tennessee, that means he's been there a lot longer than seven years. Well, with this scene, Whoa. with this COVID year, it seemed like he's been there that long. But I, I like Joe. I just don't know if I love him in Pittsburgh. He's a project. Don't forget that. Joe Milton is a project. He's the type of guy that goes uh, fishing. No, he goes hunting squirrels with the Uzi. That's the type of arm that he has, okay? Uh, that, that has, <laughs> a little a, bit of, has yeah. some Mitch Trubisky feel to it. Yeah, uh, I'm not taking him at 197. No, I'm sorry. If, I love yeah, Joe. If, if you think that you can make every throw, you can't. Okay. I, <laughs> even I could go so much further into that conversation, DK. I hear you. Um, I hear you. Decisions to run, not to run. Decision making at the point to go deep, overthrow, underthrows. Like there's a lot that goes into it. I know that one too intimate. We're we're talking about centers here a lot in the conversation over there to our, to our side, and I see that. There's the usual mentions of Jackson Powers Johnson, your guy out of Oregon, but I also see, and Mike brings us into this, says, hope we can go down 79 South and pick yeah. up Zach Frazier. He's from West Virginia. Of course, he plays with anger. What's the chances that'll happen? Could he be a center that's seen in the same light or a similar light to a Jackson Powers Johnson? He is. I think he had an injury towards the uh, last play of this uh, last year that he just had. I think he's dealing with a little bit of an injury. But, yes, uh, some conversation. This is that time of the year, season of lies, DK, okay? So take this as a grain of salt. Some think there could be four taken by the middle of the second round. That's where it goes as far as centers go. 
there's a few out there that you probably love and just thinking, of course, Zach Frazier, that was his last name, if I'm not mistaken, from uh, – West from Virginia, West Virginia. Mm-hmm. former high school state champion as far as wrestling goes in the heavyweight division. I was told this today, actually. Uh, only losses he had was to his freshman year. He never lost again. So that aggressiveness, that anger that they were just talking about is a part of his game. He is a born wrestler. He also understands angles. You go on to West Virginia, now here's the thing, too. Do we also have a Mountaineer that's asking that question, DK? <laughs> I wouldn't doubt that one actually. I think that he's come up a couple of times here already, and I have my suspicions. Clarence but Washington like says, understood. Clarence Washington says, Hey Moan, the Steelers need a center, a starter, and a second string. Both. How do you think they approach this? And, and I'll just jump in real quick here. Go ahead. Point out that Nate Herbig is still on the roster. Uh, yeah. That doesn't mean he needs to be on the roster, but Nate Herbig can also play m- back up at multiple positions for you. More you can so, do. Uh, I don't know that you need a starter and a second stringer, especially when you consider that an emergency, emergency, James Daniels could slide over. Yes, he could, man. I think the center is probably the most prevalent vi- uh, position that they, they could possibly be looking at. Again, you draft 20. That is a prime for middle of the road, short starter, first round pick. I like the way Barber that thinks. Be God. <laughs> Tell Barber spent some time in Latrobe. Oh. Two wrestlers going at it at St. Vincent College would be okay by me. Oh, my gosh. Can you imagine that? A second-year guy versus a rookie? Oh, man. DK, if that happens, we're going to have to start taking bets on that one. I'm okay with betting on who take who on that one, DK. And I I've see. always heard – Wrestling, well, I heard somebody say this on a podcast. Wrestling college parties are the best. You know why, DK? I'm afraid because they go there, they go there just to bro out, have a good time. What do they do when they're having a good time? They have a bunch of beers and other spirits there. So, what do wrestling teams like to do? Take their shirt off and start wrestling at those parties. (laughs) I heard those parties are insane, man. But like the Greeks from a thousand years ago. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. I've never oh, been to a wrestling geez. party, but that's uh, no, that's no, what no, no. Just, that's what he's heard <laughs> peripherally. Everybody. Russell Wheeler says, "Hey, Moan, what do you think the plan is for defensive line depth? Uh, is it the draft? Is it free agency? I, I'll just let's take the word depth off there. Just humor me on yeah. this." Okay. Because the defensive line it has moving pieces in the sense that Cam is back, but Cam is older. Larry's Larry O is back, but he's older. Keanu Benton just kind of came into his own, but the 17-game yeah. schedule maybe had a little bit of an impact on him here. What are you looking at with this D-line? It needs help. That's for sure. I will not yes. doubt that. I know guys like DJ Reader's up. I don't think you're going to pay a premium for a guy like Chris Jones and nobody like that. I think we do exactly what the Steelers always do. They go find a guy who's teetering in between getting older and still productive and get the most out of him. This is a position, I think, as far as Pittsburgh concerned, that if you believe in Keanu Benton, yes, but he's just a piece, I think, to find in the next Cam is the way I somewhat view that situation. Again, you, that, you will find – yes. yes. <laughs> You there? You there with, with me on that one, DK? Yes, and more than you, more than maybe you might think, and and okay. here's why. Okay, I, I'm reminded of this because did you see the the video of of Joe Green basically prank calling Cam? Uh uh-uh, I missed that it's one, man. It's fantastic. You must find it. It's after the God, Walter Payton good. Man of the Year. He calls him up and he says, uh, "This is Joe from Vegas." <laughs> and then eventually he says, no, it's Joe from Pittsburgh. And when Cam realizes that it's Mr. Green, and then of course he refers to him as Mr. Green, which is what you do. He melts. He said, I, he said, I, I, I can't believe I'm your, I'm like, I'm, I'm like your teammate. Wow. This stuff wow. we were talking about, the Steelers like yep. yourself being in the family yep. and everything. Uh, I think to the lineage. Okay. I, I need to see the next great defensive Damn. lineman, okay? Yeah. I, and I think the defensive line in its current state in 2024 is at its best possible position because you can buy that young man that you draft time because yeah. you have Cam there, because you have Larry there. He can learn from Cam. He can learn how the defensive line carries yeah. itself, the work that they do in the community. Even though I know all of you did it, the defensive line has always taken a special role they have. in that regard. Okay, 
that's been as long as I've been covering the team, if it goes from Aaron Smith to Brett Kiesel to everybody, uh, Casey Hampton, mm -hmm. there are no exceptions to this. If you're on the D line, you do work in the community. 100%, man. And just a few names. Uh, Grover Stewart, I like. DJ Reader, I like. Uh, there's a few guys that you can get a lot out of. Javon Kinlaw is a young fella that uh, is becoming a free agent from San Francisco. I think he had an injury his rookie year in San Francisco. San Francisco first, I mean, former first-round draft pick also. Um, I like him. He just had the injury bug and just kind of shut out in a very talented room as far as the uh, San Francisco 49ers go. Oh, and Tom points out, and this is valid. He said there's no Cam in this draft, and there's no Ryan Shazier in this draft. I was kind okay. of thinking that in the back of my head as I said it, but go ahead. Can I can I can I jump on this one? You guys, and including myself, didn't know what a Cam or Shazier was going to be until they became that. Mm -hmm. So fair. to say there is no Cam or there is no Shazier there is or somewhat TJ. unfair, or TJ is somewhat unfair because you got to think. Cam was a first rounder, but when was Cam picked? Thirtieth or thirty first? If I'm not mistaken, it's right there. Yeah. So we're not right in the TJ range. Yeah. Yes, right in the TJ range. We're not talking about Cam hopping off the boat, being the bona fide. Hey, like Terry Poe went first round, right? And Cam's outplayed Terry Poe for years and years and years from that point. What I'm saying is, these guys grow into that role too. Don't let that. Hey, this guy isn't there because those draft analysts aren't telling you that this is a bona fide game record. No, there are players in this draft, uh, again, on the front end of it, that are highly talented that you hope that your team gets one of. Good one here from Drew Belansky. We, we get a lot of questions about guys who are – and that's that speaks a lot to the, the, the acumen of the audience that we yeah. have, okay? Because we get <laughs> questions about Corey Trice. We get questions about guys that are kind of Mark Robinson that are a little bit on the bubble. Drew says – uh, hey, Moan, where does Spencer Anderson fit into the offensive line? Is he a tackle? Is he a guard? Is he a do-it-all? And the question that I'd have for you in that regard, Moan, is can you risk as an offensive lineman being labeled too early in your career? Well, no, he can't play that position. He plays all positions. Yeah. Um, you know what he needs? A little bit more field time and evaluation, too. He's a project. From my understanding, he has a lot of the intangibles that you love. I think he's a born tackle. But when I say he needs more field time, how does he actually set and play against NFL veterans and guys that's been in the league? That jump from year one to year two is something we need to see if he's going to establish himself as a NFL tackle. The th good thing about him is he seems good enough of an athlete that if he's not a tackle, he can move inside, you bump him, and he learns how to play that. You got to look and see. The style of offense that Arthur Smith is going to be playing sometime soon, is he a guy that's more fit to be a guard than he is a tackle? He fits right now with your team as depth. Point blank period. Ain't no other way around it. He's depth until he carves out a role for himself. And most things I would tell you this, there's about three guy, three years with guys like him that you have to somewhat uh, let, let them grow. And Pittsburgh may be a place for him that he can sit on the back burner, have one more year of growth, compete well in training camp, get some time if a guy is injured in a game to somewhat solidify and prove himself. Because y'all know, like I know, if he don't get on the field by year three sometimes, they're going to be looking over his shoulder for the next draft pick at some point. Matt McGrath says, hey, Moan, we have holes at safety, interior defensive line, offensive tackles. Hey, blah, 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 blah. What position is the most expendable? I'm not sure what he means by most expendable here. Maybe the one that you would just remove as a priority we're going to see. But, this is Omar Khan's first draft. Yeah. So we can't even say, like I've been, I, I was saying most of last week, you can't say, well, the, the way they used to do it was they would just get a free agent and they would get a draft pick at both right. spots. The way I feel about this, Matt, is this. The fact that you're saying, you're asking which one is most expendable is the reason why we're still searching for an inside linebacker and a safety and a corner. Uh, uh, not a corner, but those, like, you got to start hitting on players and getting pieces that you don't feel like you need but have to have. That's what this team is. If you're asking me what's the most expendable, we've gotten away for the last, like, three years on not having a starting stud inside linebacker. That group of the trio that played this year was doing their freaking thing. So if you're asking me which one is more expendable, it might be the off-ball linebacker. But you look at the good teams around the league, they do have a really good off-ball linebacker.
That's lots of noise about Papa Ray issue. happening over in our in what our comments. That leads me to believe that oh yes, indeed, Papa Ray has come in with twenty gift memberships. Yeah, the way yeah. to accept those gift memberships anytime at all, not just when we announce it, is to have make sure that your accept gifts option is on when you're in the live chat here. Uh, and the boss wants to know something about the hair. The boss is interested. Is it up in high? No, my th- she my says it just looks head. good. Thank you. I'm actually a, a day away from actually having to go back to the barber. I'm gonna miss it tomorrow, though, uh, or on uh Wednesday. So, no, nah, he just tightened me up on the edges. I was fresh last Wednesday, Dolly. You missed it, man. You out here playing <laughs> around in the, in the peanut gallery. Come on, I just got a good hairline. That's all. <laughs> he actually she's laughing. laughing, she's <laughs> laughing big time right now. I'll get her to <laughs> laugh on screen. <laughs> <laughs> there she is. She says you look great today. I ain't even you trying. I ain't even trying today. Just, you just just wake up looking flawless. What are you gonna uh, do? Uh, it is what it <laughs> is. You know what it, it is what it is, man. I'll just go ahead and continue. <laughs> uh, Matt uh, or, or Matt wants to know: Are GMs are GMs getting are going for projects with higher ceilings or more surefire players? What do you think the trend is, especially now that? You're leaving college earlier. That's a great question. I think mm-hmm. it's um, when it comes down to development, though, I do think NFL coaches are realizing they do have to re- acquire and teach up and retrain some of these guys. I saw you mentioned Joe Milton and Anthony Richardson. Their, their ceilings, if you hit on them, it's high. But if you fell on them, the reset, especially at the quarterback position for the coach, I mean, we're talking about a five-year reset. Three years to figure it out, a fourth year, and then an in-between to go find another guy. It's where college is, in my opinion. They're just the teaching. Guys staying at one school and understanding how to break down a system, it's just different. So almost everybody is somewhat of a project these days. Nick says, hey, Moan, how did it make you or your teammates feel when fans would say that the Steelers played down to their competition I want to hear this answer, and I want to hear it truthfully. Ooh. Pissed off. Mm-hmm. Live it. Live it. <laughs> um, and also questioning, too. Very questionable. Like, not in these words, but are we playing down? Like, that, those, like how did this team jump out on us? And we know they're going to play us hard. Like, some teams might just be a mixed match day someday. Like, some teams might just catch you sleeping at the wheel. But to say you play down to competition, no, at least the group that I was with never had that feeling because, one, we can't catch, can't run the ball, can't throw the ball, can't play defense. So we're just labored workers, man, just trying to make it happen and everybody else. I'll speak for my group on the inside. We never felt like we played down. Some days you just get your you-know-what whoops, but – it used to piss me off. I ain't going to lie to you. That was one of them, like, you come out here and get your head bashed for 70 <laughs> plays. And let me know if, you, if, if, we're, if we're playing down and they are. Like, I can, I get it. And I can understand the perception of it, too. Golly, this is such a great – why did you ask a question like that today? Uh, that is, because because of Oakland. Oh, <laughs> it's because – come on. It's Oakland. It's why. the tie in Cleveland, damn it. <laughs> they just – which is why we had inside that building the mindset that teams will play us differently. A team plays like I've seen the Browns look like trash against the Jets, but they would play it, you differently, which is something that the 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 the, the casual fans not going to notice. It's just not going to happen, and because they felt like, especially the Browns, oh my god, it, it was it was like they felt like they could compensate for a certain percentage of their miserable season just by beating Pittsburgh, right? Yes. Yes, like, and it used to tick me off, too, because I'd see a guy just brother-in-law on it, just like, okay, you got your block, I got my block, and, man, I almost had him. And then they come out <laughs> against you, and they're, doo, 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 doo. I'm like, where, where were you this? on film? Where was that? Well, so I, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't. Let's say, I don't want to say sleep at the wheel. They called us at a bad time. They DK, you've been in those stadiums. 
I those have, teams just they look get really different. revved up. They think the fans think the same thing too. They think, hey, I've been coming here all year. It's been really miserable. This was what it was like in Oakland, by the way, because the Raiders have in Oakland had real fans. Okay? They did These monsters with the spikes and the masks and stuff. That's not an act. I think no, that's how these real. people go to the grocery store. Okay. <laughs> Really? Okay. Yeah. You, until you've walked through that parking lot and where we had to park as media, we had to walk right through this same gauntlet. Okay. And you yeah. see these people and you're going, what in the hell is that? And for you guys, they're hanging right over that railing, yep. which is like a hundred years old and looks like it's going to fall down on top of you. Okay. It's a different scene. It does different it, things. It, it, I'm sure with your mind. I don't want to say we try it's just that some days those bad teams just get you. They just get you. And and Chris, it ain't just us. It's oh, other no. teams. Too. Plus, no. It ain't like it, it's your team, and you feel a certain way about it. But Chris, I swear it ain't just us. Oh, I hate that crap, though. But Joe wants to know: Did you ever actually look past an opponent? Did you feel like this is different? This is a different question. You're playing a team one week, but all you're thinking is, man, we got Baltimore the week after. We got Cincinnati the week after. You can't. You can't. Not, uh, and I'll say this again. Take that. take it from where we come from. In the old line, there is no playoff. Like a wide receiver, a brother-in-law, and making it through and stuff like that, I would say from the interior end, quarterback, running back, offensive line, and sometimes the tight end, you can't afford to play that way. You just can't. Uh, did I look forward to playing the team the next week? Or we in Cleveland and we should win and we are winning or going into the game? Like, yeah, I'd be looking forward to the playoffs in those moments, but we'd still win, though. So there's so many of those times that happen, too. Pittsburgh Hornets wants to know the worst fan base. I'm going to jump on this because it's not worst. To, for me, worst isn't the place where you go where they make you the least comfortable. Okay, yeah. that actually, those are great fans. Okay, they're obnoxious. You hate them. But you know they're invested. Yeah. Worst by a mile, by a mile, be like Phoenix, Arizona, uh, Charlotte, North Carolina, where they don't care about when they were anything. San Diego. When they were San Diego, uh, I thought the Chargers, Chargers. Had, the Chargers had fans. Well, Chargers you listen fans. to them. Well, in, in this, in the last like five to seven years, probably. Oh, not you mean much. L.A. Chargers? Oh, that, they're not even a thing. Yeah, that's probably yeah. That, that's probably number one. In, if in I can the give entire one, NFL, I give one I love and hate it because huh. they weren't real. They aren't real to this day about their uh, positioning. Probably Cleveland. They sell out so damn much. But on the backside of that, though, they're nasty as heck when it comes down to the name calling. Like, I, I, I hate to be the one that comes to their defense, Moan. Do it. I love 70, it. Here. If you put seventy three thousand people in a stadium for a game in which you're about to go zero and sixteen. You 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 plant every flag you want for fandom. Okay. I'm sorry. I had I had to drive to that stadium and you saw it too because you'd come in on buses and you'd see these seas of humanity and you're there for a game that can make them 0 and 16 and you're like, what yeah. in hell is wrong that's with you people? Fair. That's fair. The all, the <laughs> only thing I don't like about them is their pot meat kettle. All the stuff that their fan base said about seven. And on the back end of this oh, now. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. No, that's you can what I mean. The personal I think. stuff. Yeah. The personal yeah. stuff. The places that have no identity, like like Arizona, like yeah, North you're Carolina, right. these you're places. Right. They just, whatever. You, you see some teams or some cities and regions will line up faster with their teams. Like, I think Tennessee did. I'm not just saying yeah. that because I'm talking yeah. to you. Uh, you know, not so much Memphis, obviously, because that was temporary. But when they, once they moved to Nashville right. – that was yeah. different. Okay, they got it adopted. Was. They got adopted really, really fast. Hey, guys, I literally have a flight to catch. I know that sounds like a line. But uh, this was really – we packed a lot in here. We did. That was good. You said we was going back to back, and I should have cut some of my answer short, but it is what it is. Oh, no, no. We did We did fine here. This was this – The was playing really down good. got me going. I see that. <laughs> we, we should discuss that more. We should. I see that. All right, guys. We will see everybody. Hear this now. We will see everybody on Friday Yeah, back here. I'm doing spring training. He's doing the combine, and we're going to come up with all kinds of – how did somebody put it here? Hang on. I saved this one. 
What did you uh, say? The, I, somebody said uh, that we we were required. Here it is. This is from Wes, who said, "Hey, Moan, we need some real good juice when you come back Friday and you two DKC. See? He'll have juice as in information on the combine. I'll have actual orange juice. It's different." <laughs> Yes, that is what you had last year around yep. that time. That's right, pal. Yeah, squeezed right from the tree. The only good thing about Florida. That's that's very true. And my homie Pounce and Al now. And Pounce. Yeah, and Dave. And Dave. Bye, guys. There you go, people. Let's go. Oh, she's chasing me out. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>